Hello you all creative minds. Welcome to the first video in the series of next generation robotics and future tech. So before starting, let's hear from the man himself who introduced three main laws of robotics in 1942, which are also known as Asimov's laws. So there is always so much debate going on regarding things like robots are taking over jobs, robots are killing humanity, robots this, robots that. I mean come on people, we need to give some space. So many of the people are not aware of the whole idea about what actually robotics is. I mean it's definitely not the terminator thing which everybody has on their mind. There is so much more in robotics which is in my opinion pretty useful and mandatory. So how do I know all this? Any guesses? Anyways, I'm telling you, don't stress your mind so much because we will be needing that mind for sure for this entire video. So I myself, a robotics researcher, I build, design and do all kinds of stuff with robots in my day-to-day -day life. So you can count on me. But before jumping onto the conclusion, let's first understand what this robotics is all about, why we actually need it or maybe not, I mean everybody is holding on to their own opinions. And at the end, how it works then maybe with this basic knowledge we can have some discussion later. Okay? Okay, so let's get started. So first is why we need robots. So specifically for four things. Dangerous, dull, dirty and delicate. Let's get back to dangerous. Robots have become increasingly important for investigating and researching hazardous and dangerous environments. These robots are capable of entering an active volcano to collect the data or in the burning building to search for the victims. Robots such as Scout, which is a throwable robot, are used by law enforcement agencies and fire departments to help find information about people stuck inside the building. And these robots even have the ability to detect grenades and explosives in the area. These unmanned robots also save lives because they prevent people from having to enter the hazardous environments before they are knowing what to expect. Second is dull. Dull means long and repetitive tasks which are boring. Which comes to two factors, productivity and efficiency. Manufacturing is becoming increasingly sophisticated. Tapping into the critical thinking skills that people bring is essential. By freeing them up to focus on making informed decisions and problem solve, manufacturing operations become more agile, which are able to respond quickly to shift in everything from performance to supply and demand. In this model, robots play a vital role, bringing smartness to the process with intelligent analysis on error reporting, quality reporting and status update. The robots feed faster and better decision than humans. Third is dirty. Robots can do all sort of things, from performing delicate surgery to collecting mineral samples on Mars. Now a new generation of robots is leading a hand at protecting our environment by taking on tasks that are too difficult, dangerous or dirty for humans. According to the chief marketing officer of robots in the service of environment who build robots to do environmental work, they said that robots are becoming the hero in terms of doing things that humans can't. Fourth is delicate. Delicate means things are which are too difficult to do with our hands. This thing can be understood by looking into the medical robotics field. Most surgeons do not have stability to stitch together the small blood vessels when doing reconstructive surgery. Even the hands of skilled surgeons tremor when performing the task. A new surgical robot developed by Dutch, that robot suppresses those tremors while increasing the number of surgeons who can perform this delicate task. Here is a beautiful example where a Da Vinci robot stitches a grape back together. Now we have understood that why we need robots. But the most important question after that is what is robot? So robots are machines that can do many things. They build cars, explore space, fix our bodies. And like humans, a robot needs to see, hear or feel with its senses and move its body. Just like us, robots also need energy to work and intelligence to make decisions. Okay, so I'll explain you how robots are related to humans in so many ways. And I'll try to keep these things as simple as possible, so no worries. Let's talk about humans. 
Humans have five senses, which are like sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. We also have other senses such as balance and temperature. Our brain uses these senses to understand the world. But when it comes to robots, this is the biggest limitation, which is to give them the ability to see things and understand their environment. Our five human senses gives us an amazing variety of information about the world, but it's actually pretty challenging to duplicate that behavior into the robot. So let's break it down one by one and compare it with human versus robot. Senses. First is our sight. Our eyes use light to create an image in our brain to see different kinds of objects. For example, just by looking at things you can tell that this is a cat and this is a dog. When it comes to robots, robots have multiple cameras instead of eyes. Sometimes robots have cameras in their chest or even in their hands or as usual like on the head. It depends on what kind of task they want to perform so that they can see the objects. Remember the Curiosity robot which is a Mars rover? That particular robot has 17 cameras for different functionalities. Robots also have range sensors which means the sensors which are used to sense the distance. Robots can use infrared light or laser scans in order to get known to the unknown environment. Moving on to the second thing which is hearing. Inside our ears there are tiny drums which move whenever sound hits them. This moment is how we hear the sound. Robots use microphones for ears. They turn sounds into electricity. A computer can then work out what sounds mean what. The sound sensor can detect the both decibel values. A decibel is a measurement of a sound pressure. The sensitivity of the sensor is adopted to the sensitivity of the human ear. In other words, these are the sound that your ears can hear and feel. Moving on, another factor is smell. Do you know that inside our noses there are millions of tiny sensors? These sensors recognize little particles in the air as smells. When it comes to robot, these robots are equipped with the sensors that detect smells. These robots can be used to detect the gas leaks. Touch. Our skin can feel things that press against it. This sense of touch is needed to help us to feel and to pick up the object. Some robots have sensitive skin that feel touch. These senses can help them to hold delicate objects. For example, the touch and the tactile sensor are the devices which measures the parameter of the contact between the sensor and the object. Another important parameter is balance. Just like us, when we walk, when we run or when we climb the stairs, do we actually fall? No, we manage our body in such a way that we try to be in a predefined position as our kinematics. So when it comes to robots, robots also need the sense to balance and move, otherwise they would fall over. Movement So when we move, what do you see? We use our muscles, we use our bones to climb the stairs, to run or to walk. So inside robot, there are motors to move the part of its body. Most robots move around on wheels, others such as Romeo have legs. Usually these movements done by motors and motors are of different types like servo motors, DC motors, electric motors and stepper motors. It depends on what kind of robot you want to build. Usually servo motors are widely used when it comes to controlling the robotic arm or joints because these motors are precise. You can control these motors with particular step angles. Well, if you guys want, then I can make a separate video just on how robots do these amazing things with such precision which will be very interesting actually. So you can let me know in the comment section. Moving on, the most important factor in the robotics is now intelligence. Robots need intelligence to decide what to do. Most robots use computers as their brains. Modern robots such as iCub can learn from their surroundings. When I say computers means, let's take an example. If you are building a small scale robot based on Arduino or Raspberry Pi or Pixhawk, we have like n number of controllers. And if you write few lines of code depends on different tasks which you are expecting from your robot. And when you feed that code to the controller of the robot, then that means you are giving the robot intelligence to perform some specific task. But this is something very basic. Now let's talk about which is more advanced. 
which I use on a daily basis as a robotics researcher. For example, let's say we made a robot and programmed it to go from point A to point B. So this robot will only do that thing. It will start from point A and end at point B. It will not go right or left. That means you told your robot what to do and it did the same thing. But when it comes to advanced algorithm like AI, machine learning, artificial neural network, these algorithms have ability to learn itself. For example, let's say we have a robot which is programmed to detect whether this is a cat or a dog. So in machine learning, which is one type of advanced algorithm platform, what we do is we'll give the robot large number of data sets, which will be having many number of images related to dogs and cats. When we will tell the robot to detect whether it's a dog or a cat, the robot will compare its real time image with the images in its database and come up with the solution. Robots may come up with the wrong solution, but it will correct itself. And that's how it's going to learn by trial and error. It looks complicated, but it's pretty cool. As a human, we all need energy to do some task in our daily life. We get it from food. Similarly, robots also need energy for moving, sensing and thinking. Robots usually run on electricity. They get this electricity either from being plugged into the power supply or from the batteries. Many robotics devices run on the batteries or must be connected to the power supplies. Battery life challenges usually limit prolonged operations of UAV, humanoid robots and exoskeletons. And having an onboard battery is one of the challenging areas in the field of robotics to fulfill the energy requirements. So let me give you some examples. Generally, in the robotics, if the size and the weight of the robot is more, then the battery requirements are usually high because heavy robots need heavy duty motors and they're usually made for some heavy duty applications. So I hope that makes sense. So let's see some of the robots. This little interesting robot is Caddy. Its weight is 616 gram and it uses 3.7 volt battery, which is pretty small. But the things which this robot do are like singing, dancing, voice recording and personal delivery assistant, which are pretty small. So the power requirements are supposed to be not that much. Now let's move on to little bigger robot, which is now. It is autonomous programmable humanoid robot. This is one of the famous robot in the world developed by SoftBank Robotics. Currently, this is in the fifth version and about 10,000 now have already been sold throughout the world. So you can see this robot has height of 23 inch, weight is approximately 5 kg. Power supply is like lithium battery, which is 48.6 watt and it can be actively used for around 90 minutes. Now let's look at something more bigger, which is Asimo. It's the first humanoid robot in the world that can walk independently and climb stairs. Asimo has arms and hands, so it can do things like turn on the lights, open doors, carry objects and push carts, which is pretty impressive back in the days. Nowadays, we have more advanced robots with us. So in the previous model of the Asimo, they had like 38 volt battery with weight of 17 LB which require four hours of full charge and it can operate continuously for 30 minutes, which involves walking with the speed of 1.6 km per hour. And the new generation robot has improved from 2004 to 2011 with the battery capacity of 51.8 volt, which is about 13 LB weight and which is better than the last version. And it needs only three hours to charge, which is good. And this time it can actually run or walk for approximately one hour with the running speed of 9 km per hour and walking speed of 2.7 km per hour. So the interesting thing in here is to look at is the robot size and weight got increased, the battery requirements also got increased. So with the advancement in battery technology, maybe in the future we will be having lightweight batteries with more capacity and less charging time. I hope you learned a lot and you enjoyed the video. So that's all for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I will be sharing the different types of robots all around the world. And if you wanna keep yourself updated with such cutting edge technologies, then please hit the subscribe button, like and share this video and let me know by commenting down below that what do you think about the field of robotics. Have a nice day and take care.